Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know I haven't posted a video in a long time. It's not that I haven't been recording. I do record videos, but the thing is, I overthink the videos after I record them and I feel like I'm not giving enough information, so I don't want to put out bland content, so I end up never posting the videos. But since I set a goal for myself and I want to abide by that, I have decided to stop overthinking things and stop doing the most and just put the content out there to the best of my abilities. So here goes nothing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and sticking it out with me. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Cassandra. I'm a licensed realtor in the state of Florida. On my page, you will find a day in the life with a realtor. You'll also find information pertaining to purchasing real estate and investing in real estate. Today, I'll be telling you guys what you need to do in order to purchase a home in 2021. Right now is the perfect time for you to purchase a home. Not only are the interest rates low, but there are a lot of first-time home buyer programs going on, a lot of grant assistance going on, down payment assistance, um, and things like that that you may qualify for based off your situation. Um, I just want to tell you the basic qualifications for purchasing a house right now. I know a lot of people are saying that as long as you have a 580 and up, you should be able to purchase. I believe your credit score should be at least 650 and higher. Reason being is because the higher your credit score is, the lower your interest rate is. Your interest rate has a big effect on how much you end up paying monthly for your mortgage. So the higher the credit score, the lower the interest rate, the better for you. Um, another thing that you would like to think about is your income history. In order to qualify for a loan, you have to have two years of consecutive income. And it doesn't have to be from the same job. It just has to be from the same type of income. Prime example is if you were working for a company last year and you received a W-2, and this year you don't receive a W-2, you're actually self-employed and you have a 1099, you won't qualify for a loan. You have to have two years consecutive employment of the same type of employment. So if you were working for a company last year and you received a W-2, this year you have to receive a W-2 as well. So you have to still be doing the same thing. If you were self-employed last year, this year you have to be self-employed as well. So that's what um, banks usually use to determine the consistency and if you're going to be dependable when it comes to paying your mortgage on time and keeping a job and things like that. Another thing to think about is when you're qualifying for a loan, it's best to know what area are you really interested in. Before you go out there and start purchasing a home, you're going to need a pre-approval. And before you run and go get a pre-approval, it's best to know, am I actually going to get qualified for the home that I want to purchase? Is this in my price range? Is this out of my budget? There's a lot of things that come into play. Um, you do know that with the FHA loan, they use the debt to income ratio to qualify you for a certain amount of money. So you, there are a lot of calculators online that you can use to determine this, but the debt to income ratio is basically um, a formula calculating how much money you make compared to how much money you spend on your expenses every month. And if that's too high, you won't qualify for a certain type of loan. For example, I believe the FHA loan is um, between 35 to 45% and the conventional loan is a little bit more lenient when it comes to that. If you're trying to purchase an investment property and you're willing to put 20% down, that usually doesn't come into play because they know that the funds to pay the monthly mortgage are only coming directly out of your pocket. So let's just make sure I said everything. So I already said that you should have a 650 credit score and up. You should have two years of the consecutive income. Another thing to make sure is intact is your down payment. A lot of people think because they're qualifying for these programs that they don't have to have any money coming out of their own pocket and that's not true. Majority of these down payment assistance programs do require for at least 3% of the funds to come from your own pocket. So even if you're qualifying for a down payment assistance program or if you're using a VA loan which requires no down payment, you still have to pay for closing costs. Just to give you a close estimate, closing costs usually range about three to 5% of the actual purchase price of the home. So when you find out what area you wanna live in and you get a gist of the average prices of the homes in that area, then you can kinda calculate how much money you'll need. Your down payment will probably be 3% 
three to five percent depending on which loan you qualify for and then your closing cost would be between three to five percent depending on the purchase price of the home itself so just to go over everything we have your credit score at about 650 two years of consecutive income depending if it's self-employed or if you're working with a if you have a job um so that's 650 credit score two years of consecutive income down payment and another thing is to qualify for a loan you're gonna have to provide at least three bank statements and in those bank statements you have to make sure that all of your funds are intact the money that you say that you're going to be using towards purchasing the home or actually in your account at the time of the pre-approval because that could be a setback and that could be something that prolongs the process for you and determines whether or not you'll be able to get approved another thing to think about is it is if you have a lot of money coming in and out of your bank account that is not accounted for, that could also raise a red flag to the underwriter and you will have to give explanation of to where those funds are coming from. So if you know that you plan on purchasing a home within the next three to four months, the best thing for you to do is to make sure you have all your paperwork aligned, your credit score is good, your money is saved up, and that your bank account is intact without too many red flags popping up so it doesn't interfere with your actual pre-approval. And the last step and it can be the first step is to make sure you have a good realtor who is informed about the area that you're interested in purchasing in and someone you can relate to it's one thing to have a realtor that's well informed about real estate but having a realtor that you can't relate to will kind of put a hindrance to your whole home buying process you want to work with somebody that you can relate to somebody that you feel comfortable speaking to and somebody that you trust most importantly somebody that you trust so before you pick a realtor this is something, this is a very big decision that you're making purchasing a home and acquiring a property. So before you pick a realtor, speak to a couple of them. Don't make a commitment. The one thing that I don't like is when people make a commitment to work with a realtor and the next thing you know, they start looking for another realtor. Before you make a commitment of what realtor you're gonna work with, speak to a couple of them and see whose personality meshes well with yours. See whose worth ethics you like the most and then go about picking your realtor that way, okay? So th this is everything that you need to do in order to purchase a home for 2021. I hope you guys are ready. This is the year of home ownership and in the process of breaking generational wealth, real estate plays a huge part of that. So I hope you guys are ready. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I do have a lot more in store. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.